everybody, this podcast is proudly sponsored by CardsRevelease.com. CardsRevelease.com has been supporting the game since Opus 1. Use promo code CHOKABROS to save 10% off your next order. Hello, 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 and welcome to another episode of the CHOKABROS. I'm your host, Sam Snipe Prime. I'm Zach Bro, And I'm Cody Snodgrass. And this week we are going to be covering the end of Opus 7 with Opus 8 right around the corner. We're going to be covering our spoiler. Uh, we're going to do a little bit of hyper swipe. Oh, wait, is that it? Hyper swipe? Yeah, sorry. Yeah. Hasn't been that long. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, and I've, ne- I've never been on one of these episodes with the hyper swipe, so I'm excited for that. Um, but first off, uh, Sam has a brew that he would like to share with you guys. A couple of them. Well, one one gets fully shared. The other ones are, you know, just a little mess. I just, <laughs> yeah, I didn't really, I didn't write the list down and they're not on FF decks. Well, I guess the one is that I, t- I we top board with. Where you, um, you went XO with the pile, right? <laughs> Yeah, so I played in three events this weekend. We had a regular um, locals on Friday night. We had a $100 store credit on Saturday morning and then another regular locals on Sunday uh, or Saturday afternoon. The prizes aren't that insane for Friday. Uh, $100 is okay, I guess, for Saturday. And then I guess like the foil candle knot is worth getting, but like I still decided to just have some fun. Um, So I played four decks. The first one was mono water um it's up on ff decks uh some reason it's still trending people don't don't play this de- this bad deck um <laughs> but basically it's a deck synergized around lena um which i think i only did i play two lenas or three lenas i don't really remember okay that's good because it's synergized around lena and the idea of the deck is that you set up lena specials to get Golbez back which goes and gets your lena back so you can loop this over and over um there's a few other loops in the deck as well, um, as you could see by the other lightning cards. Um, and it's overall, it's a really fun deck. Uh, but I honestly think that I went 4-0 based off the fact that people forget how to read Minwoo, um, hmm. which is still an excellent card. I know people are hating on it, but people hate on all kinds of things. Minwoo is a good card. Um, yeah. But the the other uh, thing that you can do with this deck is also the X-Death Titus um thing where you you know you can play ties get excess back but in order to cast the x death you actually need to have the mid previ into play which is pretty good and if you guys don't know you can actually just discard three cards to get the mid previ into play which is important when you hit your gold early or your nidhog um you can just discard them to bring the mid previ back so the deck performed really well um there are two cards in the deck that are just unbeatable in my opinion and that is minwu and, Oz- and ozma um between Minwu and Ozma, um, just people just they don't know how to play around Ozma, and Minwu is just a really hard card to always keep track of. Not because it takes any sort of extra skill, but it's just you know you play your deck because you designed it a certain way, and whenever someone has Minwu, like you're not used to playing your deck in a different way, so you re you go, you know, like if you're playing Wind Water, for example, you're just going to play the same way you normally do until you realize your opponent has Minwu. Obviously, the better you get at the game, the less that happens. But, you know, even though I 4 would I also forgot about my opponent's Minwu during round four. Um, and it kind of almost cost me the game. So mistakes are going to happen. But, yeah, I mean, I was able to 4 with this pile of... I'm looking over right now. It's just, just such a pile. Like, I, why in the world am I even running? I was going to say, the, the Minwu thing is kind of like the difference between going Valfour Diablos and Diablos Valfour. Like, kind of becomes the issue uh, with those, with like, wind water decks. Like, sure, yeah. Sometimes you, you, you can do, like, like, you might want to do Mill with Riku, Val 4, Untap, then Diablos, but, like, you can't get that extra value against Minwu because, you know, you got to do the shrink first, then damage, that kind of thing. Yeah, and I'm actually not even a fan of that combo, but that's a whole different thing. I mean, I think Val 4 is insane. And, and oh, well, I mean, you want to do it insane, maybe but, just for one, but yeah. Yeah, like, I just don't think, like, milling is that good in that deck. It's pretty aggressive. You're going to kill your opponent pretty often. Um, but yeah, so that's the deck I played. Uh, on day two for the the hundred dollar store credit, um, I played Dorgan Control, uh, a deck that I previously talked about on the podcast, which is basically uh, Do- Dorgans from Opus Seven with uh, Yagrashes and Mions to um, cycle them and bounce them back and forth, and to keep playing them. Uh, the deck protects those um, cards with Ishtola and um, Cleon as ways to stop them from breaking your Dorgan. It suffers a little bit in a very aggressive uh, metagame, which we tend to have. Um, and then also, the old versions of the deck had a wall, so you could eventually attack uh, without running into EX Burst. But I managed to 4-0 with this deck by hitting no X Burst 
And that's basically how good players do it, right? You just hit no experts. Um, but otherwise, yeah, I, I think that deck is also pretty bad. Um, and then the deck that I got the Camelot with um, was Fire Earth uh, fighting with like the Vermilion um, five drop dude. Um, and so like it has like Hecaton Chair, uh, Titan, uh, Titan um, Yojimbo. and Yojimbo. And it just fights a lot so that your guy gets to keep attacking. But it also runs like the Graviton package that you've, we've been seeing in the Knights Prince deck. Um, it just pumps up with a lot of your guys. Um, and then it ran four Champ- Chantoto to kind of like uh, push holes into their defense. So like if you, you could attack with like a Saban, um, make one of your other dudes uh, unbreakable, and then you know you have Galoof. I also had Galoof. So make one of your other dudes unbreakable, then pump Saban, then like Hecaton fights something your Chantoto, and you actually just wipe the whole board, and all your guys don't die. Um, Obviously, the four Chantoto legend. You mean? Yes, the four mm-hmm. Chantoto legend. Yeah. So. The other thing that it also did is it played Bomb, which is the two drop monster that can deal five four K to everything. And so the idea is that like if you had like a Dataluma and a Shantoto in play, or just a Shantoto, you could activate the bomb, hit the Dataluma for four K, which would then hit either the Shantoto for four K. Well yeah, you, you have to hit Shantoto because you can't target your own guys with Dataluma. Um what do you mean? Uh, oh, Dataluma. Oh, you yeah, can't. You can't. You can't, yeah. four, you can't 4K your own guys with Dataluma. Okay, no. So, so you hit. You hit. Well, you hit Dataluma with the 4K from the bomb. Right. It deals 4K to their guy, and then it deals 4K to Shantoto, um, which then deals 4K to all their guys, and their guys already took 4K from the original bomb. So in total, you know, it's uh, 8K for a lot of them. It's 12K for some of the five drops that are still going to be hanging around. Um, the deck actually did very well. It played three Hecaton Cheer to deal with um, Minwoo. Um, but it was really fun, and that's really good. And it was a deck that I would consider for Kansas. Of the three decks, it's probably the only one I would consider for Kansas. Interesting. Yeah, we don't hear a lot of yeah. <clears throat> Fire Earth these days, <laughs> besides people trying to make Final Fantasy VII still happen. But, but yeah, or there's a Fire Earth wall deck, um, which is actually pretty good. No, uh, Adams plays it a lot, but I... Th- do, I don't know. I, I want to have a little fun and change things up a little bit. Um, I don't know that I would play... There's a good chance i play something like that in the Petite Cup, but not necessarily the finals. Um, whatever deck I play in the finals will have to either be so far off the radar that, that people have never seen me play it before, which are a few decks that way, or just something really consistent like um, your Earringer, um, Earthwind, or even maybe the Mono Wind deck, uh, because I feel like people will metagame for that, that eight. 8 to 12 person tournament on day 2. So, <laughs> yeah, right, right. Yeah. So those are the three decks I played. All right, guys, and f- for the moment you've all been waiting for, uh here is our spoiler. I'm hoping it appears. Yeah, there we go. It'll be up. <laughs> uh so what we have here is a 2 CP Earth backup standard unit, uh Final Fantasy 14. Uh tap one Earth, one colorless and tap Dark Knight. Uh, put Dark Knight into the break zone. Choose one forward until the end of the turn. It gains plus 1,000 power for each point of damage you have received. Um, so, Zach, what, do you, what are your first thoughts, thoughts about this card? So, I like the idea of it. Uh, I've played around every opus to try to make some kind of, uh, for lack of a better term, well, the, the old hit me daddy decks. I don't know if you were around during when those were a thing, but with like Gabranth and all the Dark Knights, that's what everyone called it. Uh, where it synergizes around, you know, you being on high damage and you having these just big, dumb earth forwards that just are hard to deal with. They're all brave. Uh, some of them synergize off damage to get, like, bigger, or they pump, like, the, uh, the Dark Knight from, I think it's Opus 4, uh, that when it enters the field, pumps one of your guys. Like, that'd be cool with, like, Necromancer. So, I think there might be kind of a fun list there. I don't know how competitive it's going to be, but, uh, it's definitely something I'll be brewing with, uh, towards the beginning of the Opus. Interesting. And Sam, what are your thoughts on it? Um, I like I like the card actually a, a lot. Um, I think that there's a lot of ways. Like Noctis is a great example, and all the fight, um, all the fight spells and triggers. There's a lot of ways like where you're uh, being able to pump your guy more than Monk, because that's where this, this slot is competing with. Probably is like Opus Two Monk. True. So being able to compete with the Opus Two Monk in certain situations is pretty good. Um, although, like the Monk, you can get this backwards Necromancer, um, that style of thing. But I think what people should be most excited about with this card is title, because Final Fantasy XIV was already a very, very good title, uh, one in which uh, their forwards drastically care about their power level, such as Ida, 
Um, and so being able to pump your guys at instant speed um, as a backup is really good, particularly a breakable backup so you can fill the slot with the rest of the uh, size of the Seven Dawn backups. Mm-hmm. So overall, I really like this card quite a bit. Um, the problem is, I suppose, it's way better in title than it is outside of title because, like, Right now, when I'm building Earth decks, I'm choosing between like Mob, Mog Mobius, uh, Monk is sometimes in there, Tom is okay, uh, Kate Sith backup, uh, Doga is even in the consideration for a lot of these these decks. Not to mention, you kind of want to fill your your, your backups with, with Minor, um, Minfilia. Right. Um, so, in, even in title, like those decks are already, those backups are already in contention. Uh, but I do think this adds to the title deck, whereas in constructed standard, I don't know that it'll see play or a ton of play. And if it does, it'll be similar to kind of what Zach was saying in those, um, in those like damage matters decks. Uh, could go and maybe we to... a weird aggressive Fusilia build or something. I don't know. It could because yeah, it could particularly with Noctis where you can pump your guy up. Um, True. Yeah. Actually, that'd be pretty good. It... Yeah, because he gets a plus one once it resolves as well. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I'm not a, I'm not opposed to it for sure. If I were, if this card were anything other than a common, then it would be like if we we're in hyper swipe, it'll be like a swipe for me. Uh, but you know, I think this card's actually pretty good limited too. It's almost like pseudo removal, um, and that's important to note that you know this card it can be used as removal. It's a backup. It's a good. It's a two CP backup. Pick. Yeah. Yeah, it's a good early pick if you're drafting, um, and it's probably great in title. So I, I really like this card quite a bit. Do you think it could ever find a home in a constructed deck like Scions? Like you were saying with Ida, does e, is Ida good enough with the card to justify a spot, or is it? I mean, they're back. No, already pretty I tight. mean you'd you'd already be playing. Yeah, you'd already be playing Monk if you could afford that. I mean, Monk is double Earth, of course. Um, but giving your guys Brave in the mirror match is one of the most important things you can do. Mm-hmm. Uh, so no, I don't think so. Only because if it were going to happen, it would already be happening. Right. With Monk. That's fair. There are times where this thing's only going to pump your guy by one or two k. Monk's always a solid three k, and the brave aspect is not to be overlooked. So, right, right. So, speaking of Opus Eight, that's our spoiler. But there have been a lot of other spoilers, and also magazines giving us cards, some official uh, card of the weeks from the NA page and other uh, official Square Enix pages. We're gonna do a little hyper swipe with you guys. Uh, like you said, Cody, you uh, haven't really done too many of these. Sam's a veteran by now; he knows what to do. I'm going to give you a card name. I'm going to tell you what the card does, unless you both know what it does already. And we're going to see what you think of them. And I may chime in here and there, but it's mainly for you guys. Yeah, is that is that swipe? Like, it's going off the screen? Gotcha. It's like, it's like the gladiator thing. <laughs> yeah, right. I say, but there's no down. There's no negativity here. All right. So we're going to start off with Iroha. Or Iroha. I'm assuming neither of you know what that card does. Iroha. Oh, I got so, it. I got so it's a uh, it's a three CP seven K uh, fire forward samurai. Uh, if a fire character you control deals damage to a forward, it's increased by one thousand instead. So it's kind of like Palum, except specifically for fire, and it uh, it's forwards only, not all damage. Also, it can dull to deal one K to anything. So it's on curve body wise. It has a you know interesting ability. So Cody, what do you what do you think about the card, Cody? Uh, do I just instantly give hyper swipe? Or can I provide you, reason? You hyper swipe, and if you want to give reason, you can. We'll. Uh... Okay, I'll say swipe. Uh, I will pass on this card. Um, mostly just because the three drop forward slots and fire are pretty crowded already. Yeah. And. Uh... Is there three drop fire cards? <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Well, lice will be out. Uh, VV used to be a big thing. It's less or so now. Imaginary brawler. That's my favorite. <laughs> I haven't seen that card in a while. How about you, Sam? Yeah. So I will go with a swipe. And it's not because the card's not good. The card's probably pretty good. It's just because Fire actually has better cards than this. And that's surprising to say. I think that it, the only two things that it has going for it um, is that it can be played in an 11 deck. Uh, not just title, but an 11 deck like uh, Earth, um, Earth Wind. It's a mm-hmm. great Phoenix target, um, particularly because you can ping down a little bit with it. Right. Uh, although it does does do two K, not one K, so you have to be careful not to kill your own data limits. Um, it's it's fetchable, and you know, like I said, it's a phoenix target, so that could be the saving grace. I don't think you're ever want to tap it to deal something damage, um, 
and f and a typical fire deck because you're you're kind of pushing the the aggro button. So right, yeah, right. I, I, I would swipe. I don't think that there's a chance that this is a card that I would even remotely consider building around, but it is a card that I would consider playing in very specific decks where you run out of other good cards to play, which seems unlikely. I, I, I could see it in like a fire wind brew where people want to like pair with Barbarisha or something. And that's just kind of like their extra dancer. Um, anyway, moving on uh, is the two CP Sabin or Sabin, however you guys want to say it. It's a two CP five K. It is a monk. Uh, obviously it's from six. Uh, when Sabin attacks, choose one forward, deal it two K. If you control Edgar, deal it four instead. Uh, Sam, we'll start with you this time. Um, I doubt that this will see play even in title. <clears throat> okay. I think that I think the the, the one thing it has going for it is that his name is Sabin. It's ironic that that's what it has going for it because I think it's just you know it. I, I don't know. Think about like as far as this, like it's good for Rising Phoenix, and I think that's it. I didn't um, know if maybe the monk typing was a good thing, but the, the monk would be good if it was a backup because then you could get it with like Matt or something. Mm -hmm. um, so you could you could actually get a fire backup off Matt instead of just getting monk. Um, whereas currently right now, I don't think that you're able to do that. So I would like this card a lot more if it was some sort of red monk backup, which we maybe we'll see or maybe we already saw and I missed it. Um, but yeah, I'll, you know, if you've ever built a six title deck, it, the deck is just full. It's just absolutely full. And, and if I wanted an extra copy of Rising Phoenix, then I would consider it. Cody? Yeah, it's definitely going to be a swipe for me as well. Uh, I think it's okay in title. I'm sure it'll see some kind of play in title, but in Constructed, I can't see it being played over the four drop. That's fair. Um, how do we feel then about Lava Spider? So this is, uh, people have been kind of hyping this up. Uh, what do you guys think? We'll start with, uh, we'll just alternate. We'll go with Cody this, this time. Uh, yeah, I like this card. Um, I know you made a comment. See, you play ice, see, so you don't yeah. care how big their guys are. <laughs> yeah, it seems like every fire forward at some time of this set is just going to be like well over like 15,000 power at some point in the game. <laughs> uh, but no, I think this card's pretty good. I mean, for one CP, it's not. I mean, it's pretty. I don't know. I like it. I, I'll hype this card. Um, but like you said, I play ice, so I don't think it's going to make much of a difference. But. Sam? Um, I think the card is similar to Anthems in other games, like Magic. Um, something like Glorious Anthem we'll see play in, like, uh, Tokens decks. Um, obviously, we don't have Tokens in Final Fantasy, but we do have decks that can that can spawn a bunch of forwards pretty quickly. Mm -hmm. I could see this actually in not only just a fire deck, but, like, a uh, turbo, like, ice fire deck. You remember the, the old, like, very yeah. aggressive decks? So that your guys are just really big. Yeah, two CP um, hasty Tifa is pretty good. Well, I think like Sid Reigns, for example, is is a pretty good card, but becomes very less relevant once it's on the board without a Renoa. Um, and being able to add three thousand power to its attack, even if they're able to block like a seven thousand or eight thousand and still trade with your guy, um, one you got your value out of the way. And like, what else do you want from Sid Reigns, who's already made them kill? Who's already killed a guy, made him discard a card. Like, being able right. to turn that into utility. Same thing with Argath. Like, making your Argath a 6K is pretty relevant in the, the matches where you need to get over cards like Poor and Layla and Viking. Um, mm -hmm. So I think that that could be really important. So I don't necessarily see it in Mono Fire, I, and I could be wrong. I know there's some synergies with Euranger, but I don't think that that's where I want to be unless it's in Scions. Um, it has some cute synergies with Ramza. Um, so that you can actually pump your Ramses at 10k pretty easily. Um, so you can break some three drops. But, yeah, I could see it in Scions, possibly, particularly because I think we're getting a red Scions this, uh, this set. Um, I, think I'll hype, I think I'll hype this card, but uh, I think there are going to be lots of ways to deal with it. So Okay. Uh, how about the Palum, which is now an ice card? Uh, it's a 2 CP 5k. Uh, when it enters the field, you choose one of three effects. Either all players discard a card, uh, choose a forward and freeze it, or dull all of your opponent's backups. It. you want to just call it names or whatever? Yeah, it's Sam. Um, this card's probably really good, right? Yeah. <laughs> like... Having another having another Argas slash Thaumaturge like on turn one could be where the deck wants to go. Um... 
I don't know why it's Palum, but right, it seems very yeah. a strange color. Shift. Isn't Palum the one that gets frozen, not the one that does the freezing? I have no idea. Oh well, I spoiler. I got. I got to play like they get. They get. They get. They get turned to stone. So it's not literal, but oh, um, sure. yeah, I don't know. Um. I think maybe one of the more important things that people overlook is is doling all your opponent's backups. It really just takes the summon hand out of the, out of their uh, the summon game out of their hand. Uh, and a good example of this being relevant is for something like when you have Matthias and you're attacking. Like oftentimes the way that they counter that is just by killing their guy, and so therefore their your Matthias does nothing. Well, if you can dole all their backups and they have to overpay, then you're just totally fine. So, it's also an interesting uh, Phoenix target, the 4-drop Phoenix. Uh, you just bring it back in their combat if they plan to play something post-combat, and it just dulls all their backups and then kind of could end up time-walking them in some cases. Yeah, it, it could. It certainly is a weird sort of incentive where most of the time you would like to uh, attack first and then play your stuff. And this could punish you, but yeah, but you, so you'd be dealing like 7k on average to their guy, which maybe that's good enough um, with Phoenix. And then they would you would dole their stuff, and if they only have one card in their hand, you can even make it interesting where they just discard their card. They're, but you know, that's, it, that's yeah. you're also discarding, yeah. Cody, how about you think? Uh, this is definitely hype for me. Uh, I didn't even know this card existed until you brought it up. <laughs> I'm looking at, I'm looking at the picture now of it. Um, he looks real cocky, doesn't he? Yeah, th this card, this card's sweet. Uh, you can get it back with Opus Five Scholar. Um, True. All the effects are, can be relevant. If it's the last card in your hand, obviously you can get a free discard out of your opponent, basically. The old Gesper, yeah. There will be yeah. times where people devout this into play, too. Oh, yeah. Yeah, the the doll, the backups is huge. Mm -hmm. um, and then, obviously, the freeze ability is still pretty relevant. Um, but, yeah, this card all around is just great. Sweet. I agree. I like it. Uh, how about the new Setzer EX burst? This is kind of a weird one because of its name, but the effect is pretty good, I think. Uh, Cody, we'll start with you, Mr. Ice. Um, so this I'm going to have to swipe on. Uh, the five drop sets there just puts in too much work, uh, at least in Constructed. Uh, but I think this card is a complete beast in title. Oh, um, of course. Yeah. F6. Another backup. Pretty much add any forward you want. Get back Dataluma, Terra, anything you want. So I would hype it for title and swipe it for Constructed. How about you, Sam? Um, I will hype it for title, um, you know, it having Kefka, it has a few backups that are decent like this. It, it definitely needs some good backups, um, for title. That being said, I will hype this for construct as well. I think this card is much better than the forward. Um, I like a lot better. And it's mostly because of the way our metagame is like you either need to be aggressive. If you're playing for sets or like, I would rather just play like Sephiroth. Although I know Cody disagrees with me on that front. Um, but I think that also one thing that... It's also an EX burst, which is pretty important. But most important... or There's two things that are most important. One is that between this and Justalian uh, Empire Sid, um, your locks are always going to trigger. Not just like with this trigger on the stack that can kill your guy and now you don't get your trigger. Um, so you always get to trigger your locks. Uh, and additionally, Mono Ice now has a even another way to reoccur its lock specials, which can be brutal, not just at killing your point, but obviously making them discard a card when they weren't ready for it. Mm -hmm. um, so c can you just imagine uh, a scenario where you have lock on play and your opponent's like, oh, okay, well, you're out of lock specials. I get to attack all out and, and you can't really do much back if I leave this guy back. And then you're just like, they hit Setzer on the experts. You're just like, go get this one back from my yard. <laughs> yeah. You know? Was it Mirage Dive? Is that what it is, right? Something like that, yeah. Yeah, yeah Mirage Dive. Yeah, so to be able to like, Mirage Dive them out of EX is pretty good. But I think more importantly, is it's the ability to turn on um, your lock discard effect. But the other scenario is that you could also play this with the Ford. Um, and you can obviously search this out with the Ford. And then you have, like, a lot of the decks right now are running, like, the three Kujas. So it's not even like this is a late, like, a late game card you can't use. You can break it with Kuja, get Kuja back. Um, and so you can still play the forward, theoretically. Obviously, you have to watch your numbers. It can't be a lot of each. But we're not looking at, like, Shantoto, where, like, Shantoto forward costs six and the yeah. backup costs seven. So really, you can't afford to play both in most decks. Right. But, yeah, I think I would hype this card. 
Uh, if I played a lot of ice, I would definitely be playing it. Uh, again, if I'm on like the, the ice fire deck, which I think is looking better and better now that I see this card, um, being able to get your Sabin specials back too seems very, very good. Sweet. Oh. Oh. oh, wait, wait. Yeah, you know, that's good. Sorry, I was just like, wait, is that? It? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, well, I was, I was thinking, well, the, what I was thinking is that in your Terra Del Luma decks, you also get your Terra specials back. Mm-hmm. Um, and so that's pretty relevant, in my opinion. Yeah, I mean, in uh, Ice Earth, I don't even think I've really ever played Setzer. So having that backup, I feel like, would be... Well, I don't think there's a scarier card in that color to hit as an EX burst than this card. I mean, right. it has no 7-drop Odin or Tomos. Like, this card is a nightmare <laughs> if you ever hit it to EX burst for you. I mean, just because, like, you attack... Okay, now they get a Celeste to freeze your guy. Oh, you were planning on um, post-combat casting a summon? Well, now they have the Celeste special up. Uh, right. Runic, right? And then... Like I, the other things I mentioned, not to mention the you get Data Luma back. So, yeah, I will, I will hype this card all day. I'll, I will take a gamble <laughs> on the gambler. There you go. And then the uh, the final ice card uh, is Scholar. So, two CP standard unit, uh, backup, uh, dull it, put it in the break zone, reveal top card of your deck. If it's an ice card, put it in your hand. Uh, Cody, we'll start with you again on ice. Uh, this is definitely a hype. Um, the card just good especially in obviously in mono ice um it would hurt if you hit like your galdez or right, like your right. or whatever like light or dark card um but outside of that you're always going to hit with it the only issue i really have with it is the two drop spot is kind of kind of tough with ice like you want your harley or your bard or your scholar jill Mabot. so it's kind of like it's a it's a crowded area the two yeah. cp back but i think it's a great card sam what about you I think it's also a great card, although it's ironically like the worst possible backup for the title format. Um, but <laughs> I think it's a good card. I like that you can draw. That like you basically just break this draw card. Um, yeah. There are some disadvantages to it. One being that you have to show your opponent what you're drawing, and two being that yeah, if it hits your Yuri or your Galdez, <clears throat> like, you're going to be very sad. So maybe you can't even play those cards because you can't really afford to just break a backup. Like you, you lose a CP instantly, and you lose a card only to hit like a. It, it's like, I don't know, but maybe you can compare it to like playing like uh, Kefka's or Hecaton Cheers and your Gilgamesh deck. Like, okay, you're you can play one, and you're very unlikely to hit it. Right. But man, does it feel bad when that does happen? Yes, it does. And, <laughs> and when you play this, when you activate Scholar, it's. It just depends on what situation you're in. Like, if you're trying to catch up and, like, draw into an orphan, like, it's it's nutty, right? right. Um, if you're trying to just clear your backups to make more efficient plays, like maybe to play a Justellian, uh Sid or another decent ice backup, um, clear, clear it for a devout spot, then you just draw a card out of it. So it's free. The downside's very small as long as you build your deck correct. Right. Next card on the list, the Alexander. It's a 4 CP summon, no EX burst. Uh, choose a character of cost 4. Oh my goodness, I just reread the card. Choose a character of cost 4 more and break it. Uh, Sam, we'll start with you. Uh, swipe. Card's not that good. Um, I didn't realize it's it was character. I thought it was forward. But. Yeah, so it's good that you can like break Star Sybil, I guess. Um, or their Moogle backup if they're playing more with FCC. But... Wind already has like everything, like, and I'm not mad that they got it because like, oh well, Wind got something good. It's just that like they don't need it. Like, right, why no you need room. to break your opponent's shit for when you have Yuri? You can just don't freeze it all and draw a million cards. And yeah, no, I, I I would never play this unless it was outside of like a hope specific Alexander deck that just wanted another way or a like, Moogle to search for it. It just has so much better cards going for it, but it could depend on the meta. If we're playing a bunch of four or five drops that really need to be handled, um, if monsters break out. This is a great way to like handle their Minfilia, uh, their Shantota punch, and a punch that kills, um, you know, their Gigas. So yeah, it's it's fine, but I would swipe on it. I I, I don't think I will ever play this card. How about you, Cody? I'll, I'll hide this card. I think the fact that it is a character is kind of a big deal. Uh, you can break backups like Snow, Maria, stuff like that. So I like it. Gotcha. And then, uh, what about Death Gaze from Final Fantasy IX? So it's a new monster, uh, 3 CP. Uh, when it enters a field, choose a forward opponent controls and remove it from the game as long as it's on the field. So anyone who's played Magic before, you know the card Oblivion Ring, literal same card. Uh, so obviously Sam is saying hype, uh, but we'll start with you, Cody. 
he can just hold his thumbs up while you while you speak. And yeah, I, I gotta one. agree. Yeah. I gotta agree with him. Uh, this is this card just really good. Like, it's it's like a hard to remove Dorgan, which is pretty sweet. Yeah, like, yeah, it's just this card's just really good. I like it better than Dorgan. It's cheaper than Dorgan, right? Yeah, so just good. All right, Sam, you're nodding. The card is bonkers. <laughs> like, bonkers, bonkers, good. Like, I, Oblivion Ring is really good. And this will be fun. Um, this will be really fun to play with for sure. Um, there's Ooh, so many thought... ways you can combo Ooh. this. You can like uh, have a you could like Titus to bounce this whenever they play a four that has the same name. Right. So they right. just don't they just don't get their card back, and you can replay it later. You can Mion uh, to bounce it, draw a card. Yeah. 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 yeah um, you know when they go to Shantoto, you you could yeah you could Bismarck it back to your hand. Um, Mm-hmm. And Shantoto is their own, their own dude or whatever. All good points. I, I yeah. agree. I, the card's sweet. Uh, I didn't really think about all of that at first. I just kind of saw it right before we started this. But um, we'll yeah. move on to... Oh, and, uh, it's, and it's a nine character, by the way. So it's, oh, search for Steiner. Steiner. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. All right. So I've seen mixed things about this card. Uh, Arden. So 7 CP, 9K Legend. I know Cody hates the card. <laughs> it's uh, Brave, Can't Be Broken. Uh, at the beginning of your opponent's attack phase, they select a character they control, and they may put in the break zone. If they do, Arden cannot block. Uh, Sam, we'll start with you. Um, I'm going to swipe on it, but it definitely has potential. It's better than most people th- who think it's garbage thinks. And if you think it's good, you're wrong. So <laughs> it's it's somewhere in the middle. I almost wish there was a way I could just like give this to my opponent. Like That's how medium it is like i want to give it to my opponent so then like i can just like break my larsa and break my thornton and build a deck around like here have this arden i'm gonna draw a million cards and you'll donate yeah yeah I'll donate it and i'll and i'll buy it in it back to my own hand um obviously that's not the type of card that's gonna see play but yeah i think we'll pass but it does have brave and that's important to that, that is really important to know it is a huge plus to this type of card Cody, what about you? What are your uh, negative thoughts? <laughs> um, I'm definitely going to swipe on it. Uh, I think it is a little bit overhyped. Uh, but that being said, it's something you definitely have to consider uh, going into Opus 8 when deck building. Uh, it's kind of like just one of those cards you got to like keep in the back of your head. Sort of like, um, I guess like Adele was for a little while. Like you just had to... Still is. Yeah, just like you have to realize that it's a card and like you need to have some kind of out to it. Um, but with Yuri seeing as much play as he does, like I think this guy's going to be dulled <laughs> and frozen a lot. Or, or lose his can't be broken ability. Yeah, like because doesn't how how Carnassus cancel this out? Yep. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah all of it. It is a field ability, so yeah. Bamford's going to be hitting this guy all day long. <laughs> but I think it is still a pretty decent card. I find it interesting, yeah, at the very least. But uh, what about big... flavor wise? It's it's amazing. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, what about uh, 5 CP Gram? It's a 9K, uh, so 5-9, the thing we see all the time. It's a Dark Knight uh, from FFL. When it's put from the field to the break zone, choose a 4 to your opponent controls, and if you've taken 4 more damage, break it. So this kind of goes along with our spoiler, which is pretty sweet. Uh, what about uh, Sam? What are you thinking about this card? It's it's good with Delita R, as uh, Jamal Anderson kind of pointed out, um, because being able to break 2 of their guys... It seems pretty good. Um, and so I'm obviously talking about Opus 4, Delita. So being able to break their five drops, I think could be really relevant. Um, so you could like, let's say they had like Yuri Bartz. You just, if you have this down, you just play Delita, break their Bartz and play, break their Yuri. Um, it's pretty big tempo. Seems, and then you also get a forward. Uh, but that being said, I'm not typically a fan of cards that require other cards to be good like it needs to be somewhat good on its own and this card is okay on its own um and certainly it could be like a gabarth jack deck where damage matters um it also just blocks uh, and then kills like probably what's blocking and also another plus thing something on the way out, like, yeah so it's better with momody for sure but um if it was a knight it would be a lot better also i would never play this card because the Art is so bad. I think it's actually worse than Sid, uh, parentheses eleven and parentheses, and it's and it's not even close. I think this is the worst art. I 
I thought I, I literally thought someone was in Microsoft Paint and painted over this to like hide part of the spoiler. And then I realized that this is the same. I'm seeing this everywhere and the shadow looks the same. This is terrible. <laughs> terrible. Cody, how do you feel? We'll we'll cut him off uh, there. <laughs> Sam took the words right out of my mouth. This is the ugliest card. I thought <laughs> when I first saw it, like with the Team Calamity logo on it, I thought they like made it. I, I thought it yeah. was like a joke. Like a fake card. But then like I saw like the background and I was like, oh that's how did they do that? Like, <laughs> but no, this, the effects okay. Like the cards okay, but the art no. It's you. You have to like go against all principle to be able to play this card. Yeah, like just imagine this foil. Like it's just. Hey, maybe the foil will help. I don't know. All right, we'll move on to the next card. How do you guys <laughs> feel about Fenrir? We'll talk. Uh, actually, I should probably say what it does. Uh, if you cast it, you may pay an extra two CP. Uh, choose a light or dark forward. Break it. If you pay the extra cost, remove it instead. Uh, Sam, what do you think? Um, it's a good way to handle, uh, for like monster sex that can't handle, um, Emperor, for example, it's a cheap way to do it. Um, I, it's a good, it's great at exiling cards like, uh, Galdez. Well, it's um, nice because, yeah, it, decks that care about Emperor that don't want to play Odin. Like a lot of times they default to like a rainbow color back of so they can play it. Right. Play Odin. It's not, it's not impossible to think that the the Opus One Emperor ever makes a comeback, like it's a decent card for sure. Um, and the more Emperors they make, the more they break it. The more ways they make to where you can have multiple dark cards in player in your hand um, without being punished. That Emperor does get better. So there's the outside chance that it does it does help you deal with that. Uh, it kills Yuri for two CP, which is fantastic. I mean, if Dex had a if Dex could have a sideboard like this, would certainly be a two of in my sideboard uh for, against mono wind um yeah i, I think the deck the, this card uh, this card's pretty good um i don't know that it will see title play because the nine deck is really tight i would almost bet that it definitely wouldn't see title play unless the seven deck since there's so much coming out of the seven uh makes it to where the two clouds just absolutely have to be dealt with right. um then i could see it seen play i will hype this card because it is such a sweet tech option if something gets out of control. And this is the kind of card that they need to print more often. Um, so if Yuri gets out of control, we can put it in check, you know? Like, right. we needed something like this for, like, Jesper, you know? like Or Jesper, where, like, it's like, well, if your opponent causes you to discard this on the first turn, put it into play instead. <laughs> you know, like, something where it's like, well, it could just be mediocre. Like, this card certainly could just be used for CP, but it also could be busted. Cody? Yeah, I think this card's great. Uh, definitely hype it. Um, obviously, it kind of depends on the meta, but right now with Yuri running around like crazy, I think this card can definitely keep him in check. So, yeah, I like it. Sweet. So, uh, moving on to Lightning, uh, how do you feel about the new Ramu? It's a 4 CP EX burst. Uh, choose an active forward, deal 5k plus 1,000 for each Lightning backup you control. Uh, Sam? Um... Is it worse than the old Ramu? I like the most it does is 10k on EX. Like that one's gonna do minus uh, 8k, so it can kill an Astrola. Yep. Um, on average, so, like, like what? When am I playing this over Odin? And when am I playing this over something like um, e e Exodus? Um, it, it depends on the meta, but I'll go swipe. Cody. Yeah, I'll definitely go swipe. Um... Pretty much everything Sam said. I like the uh, the ex the already or the ex Ramu that we have from last set, and then obviously right. three drop Ramus. That card certainly Just grown on me too. That past Ramu. All right, then uh, we'll move on to a card I know Sam is super hyped about. Uh, so I almost don't even want to have you talk about it. But Strago, the two CP backup, uh, one water dull. Put it in the break zone. Choose a card named Realm of Cost two or less. Put in the break zone, play it to the field, and you can only play it during your turn. It does not say during main phase, just during your turn. Uh, Sam, we'll start with you, because I know you've been gushing about it, or at least from what I've seen. Maybe I'm wrong. Uh, I think this card is actually pretty nutty. Um, I think that in the monster decks, like I think like Fisher, for example, is just not good enough. Not to see that there's just better there's better monster cards in the decks. Uh, better better two drop backup. Sorry, like you're already like. Finding Summer. a lot of good, a good stuff. Yeah, well, Green Mage particularly is good because Summoner you have Cleon, uh, but yeah, but Gre uh, Green Mage is one of them. Um, sometimes you're playing Mirror Webs, 
Uh, it's just so, there's a lot of stuff it's contending with, but this card puts a forward into play that will also draw you a card. Uh, so it's a breakable backup that is just very, very good, in my opinion, in the late game. Cody? Uh, this card is um, S fodder for Grand Delta on the other Strago, so I like it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's also that. The fact that it's a breakable one means you can actually play both, which is pretty relevant. Right. Yeah, and then uh, obviously it's a six backup, so title, it's going to be good. Um, but no, I was pretty much kidding about the Grand Delta thing. I don't know if that ability is that, that great. <laughs> yeah, do uh, 12K <laughs> divided amongst all the guys, yeah. It's pretty good. Like, when you have, if you're, if you're playing like Cognoso or Ozma, then it can be pretty good. Uh, so then we'll move on to a new standard unit, uh, sort of color shift. We have one before, but uh, Ninja is a 3 CP 5K. Uh, water, doll, put it in the break zone. Choose a forward your opponent controls. Activate and gain control of it until end of turn. So it's uh, another type of like kind of control effect. Uh, Cody, what do you think about it? I'm just trying to think of some combinations in my head right now. Um... Sam, what do you think about it? Where is this card at? I don't even see it. What color is it? It's a water card. It's the one right after uh, Strago. It looks like a lightning card. It does look okay. like a lightning card. Okay, tell me again what it is. It's a 3 CP. You can click on it, but uh, it says water, dull. Oh, okay, I see. I see. Yeah, yeah. Put in the break zone. So, break zone, choose before you can put controls, activate it. See, the problem with this card, I think, is... It doesn't gain haste, haste, though, right? Yeah, they don't gain haste. So, activating it's only so... I guess you can do it on their turn, right? Yeah, you could also. It's another one of those things where it's double I don't know. Double. Well, you can yeah, take it, it and block their own guy with with their guy. It's not on your turn. Right, at, at instant speed. Right. Right. Um. So it's probably fine. It's also key that you can go get this with brawn if you're playing the lightning. Uh, it's just, just water. It looks like lightning, but yeah, you can get this with brawn. Um. You said it is a standard unit, right? Uh, I'm assuming. Yeah, the top corner has the triple card symbol. So. Okay. Yeah, so, wait, that's not only for standard units, And it's, though, right? and it's card named Ninja, though, so. Oh, uh, okay, okay, then, right, okay. Yeah, so I w would hype this card, but it's weird. It's also bad, so I don't know. <laughs> Cody? Yeah, I'm going to swipe on this. Uh, it doesn't give the forward haste. I didn't even think about that until you brought it up. Uh, but, yeah, I can't even imagine a deck that I'm going to put this in. <laughs> right. It'd be fun it's to, certainly like, a think It's certainly about. a powerful tool to have. But I don't think the tools exist right now to make it competitive. That's fair. I mean, it'd be cool to like take their forward and then sack it for like big Kefka and break another forward, maybe. But yeah, but you're already seems... sacking a forward for that. Yeah, it seems like a lot of work. But yeah. <laughs> uh, so then five CP Ico. So this is a forward. I thought it was a backup the first time I read it, but it's a forward. I don't know how much power it has because the photo's cut off. Uh, but it is a summoner uh, that when Ico enters the field, you may search for any summon put in your hand. And then when it's put from the field to the break zone, draw a card. And it is, like I said, a forward, not a backup. I think I thought this card was a 7K. It could be wrong, though. I mean, it's 5 cost. I hope it's 7K. <laughs> I mean, it searches for any summon, which is pretty good. But Yeah, it searches for any summon, and then it draws a card when it dies, too, which is pretty... So, 1 so... CP over time, yeah. Yeah, so you're getting a delayed investment. Um, I And I'm a big fan of that type of card. I mean... That's what makes Viking so good. I mean, this is going to be... You could play this and then go get a fan for it, you know? Mm -hmm. Pitch a card, play your fan for it, they sack a guy, and then you draw a card. Seems fine. So hype? Yeah, for sure. All right, Cody. I don't know if I can say hype or swipe on it or not without seeing the power. Uh, obviously, the effects are very good, but I'm afraid that this is just going to end up being like a 4K. All right, so what are your thresholds then? Like, where where would it be hype and where would it be swipe? 6k it's hype 6k hype 5k or less swipe yep for me it's 7k hype anything less is swipe hmm. interesting okay. I didn't want to even be... after the justification of being basically a 1 cp whatever size it is yeah yeah i mean because it still has to do some work and then uh you guys are on the same page i am correct mm -hmm. so this card we don't know what it does yet but we're going to hyper swipe the art <laughs> of the two light and dark cards and based on the characters as well so the light one there is Rain from Brave Exvius. How do we feel about that, the way that's looking? I think it looks pretty sweet. It's a mono Wait, art. Yeah. Oh, um, oh, okay. I'm sorry. I, I, I feel like this is this 
something tells me, I don't know why, this is going to be like a cheap card, like a 1 CP or 2 CP dark card. Mm -hmm. That's what it looks like to me. I have no idea what it does. I'd have to go back and look at chapters to kind of figure out. Yeah, I was thinking about doing that after I saw that these were textless. But what about that dark card? I think that looks sick. Veritas of the dark. Yeah, I could also see that being like a lower. I think that the lower cost dark card should make an appearance soon. We need something to push out um, Yuri. Although this card also looks like it costs like 12. Right, so. right. It looks like it should just cost a million. Yeah, the other card looks like it costs one or two. This card costs 12. Maybe that'll be the first 13, so uh, another target for uh, Zolera. <laughs> yeah, I guess, yeah. Now we're talking. <laughs> yeah, <they're... laughs> now you're speaking my language. <laughs> but, uh, all right, so Definitely. overall, how are you guys feeling about Opus 8 so far? So those are the, I think those were a good mix of interesting and probably some contentious uh, cards for Opus 8 that I've seen arguments about. Some of the other ones are just like, they're just clearly good. Like, I think Luna Frey is amazing. Uh, a lot of people said that. The Finas are sure, sick. Sherlotta sure so, is insane. Yeah, Sherlotta sure is insane. So I just ignored those because that'd be kind of, you know, boring to just hear us say yes the whole time. But uh, how are we feeling overall about the set? Sam, we'll go. You can talk about first. Well, I'm getting a case, so I'm excited. <laughs> well, you're doing that regardless, though, right? I don't think it's Opus 8 motivating you, right? It's just like the collection sort of like i would want to collect it or but i I, i'd be more interested like the first case i got was with opus 7 and a lot of it had to do with how good opus 7 cards are and i still think that they're really good it doesn't have a lot of good legends um it does but it's got like titus as a common and and the backups are really good like it's just a great set i feel like this set so far is really good and i'm really excited to get a case of it for sure i would hype this set for sure cody yeah um i'm pretty hyped about the set it has Palom, uh, so I guess he's really happy. Yeah, yeah especially with the Palom. I didn't even know about that until today, and that's my favorite card immediately now. So. <laughs> um, obviously, I'll start with Ice, and then... You'll, probably you'll start with ice, ice, stick with Ice, and just, then we'll go to Opus 9. Yeah. Yeah. Play standard units at like a big event. So, are there Wait, any... Like a, like a <laughs> teacup? There you go. <laughs> uh, so, Cody... Oh, sorry. You lagged out a little bit. Uh, Cody, are there any archetypes you're excited to play based on Opus 8 cards besides uh any sort of ice deck uh that's a tough question <laughs> no i'm excited to play uh with more of the ff15 characters because i'm a big fan of that game and no right. partic- i like I, I just like all those ca- characters so same there yeah. sure. now what about Delta you sam or- cool. oh, oh sorry i was gonna say uh sam uh any particular archetypes kind of jumping out to you that you really you're looking forward to trying or I want, to, I want to play some Oblivion Ring, that's for sure. Um, and there, there's a there's a Ford that gets it back, which is crazy. I, um, I almost brought that card up, but I uh, actually Uke, skipped by Yeah, it. the Uke card. Um, the Verialde. We don't know how much it costs, though, right? No, we just have that kind of cutoff image. Right, yeah, no, that card gets back Oblivion Ring. That's going to be nuts. Imagine if this card costs, like, two. <laughs> it looks I like mean, it that's costs not... two, but it, yeah, since it, it brings something back not... so expensive... If it dies, yeah, like, can't you play Mira with it and make it cost two? No, well, no, we no, don't know this what it costs yet. Fo- this is a forward. It's a forward. All right, so this is uh, Viralda. Uh, when it's put from the, it's a something cost five k FFCC forward. Uh, when it's put from the field to the break zone, choose a wind monster of cost four or less in your break zone and play it onto the field. Okay, I was lost. I thought we were talking about death gaze. My bad. <laughs> he said it gets back no. death gaze. It's interesting because it uh, it gets back Death Gaze, it gets back Layak, it gets back Zoo. There's a lot of really cool things you could do. Doesn't surprise me. It's a wind card. <laughs> so, all right. Well, I, I think that just about wraps us up, guys. Right? Absolutely. Yep. Uh, I do want to give one quick shout out uh, to Chris Adams, Matthew Rice, and to Matthew Okimoto uh, for helping make my birthday extra special this year. So, thank you to those guys. Uh, you guys got anything else you want to add in before we wrap up? No, um, just, you know, look, look forward to uh, Cody and I. We're going to be playing in the Petit Cup this weekend. We're really excited about it. Um, I'm going to do whatever I can to help Cody test so that we can get into him into the finals as well, so we can day two this thing together. Um, you know, you can look for Cody's Mono Ice deck, or <laughs> maybe I'll convince him to play something crazy like I will. So we'll see. Good Only luck. time will tell. <laughs> Well, that about wraps us up, guys. Uh, I've been Cody Snuggrass. I'm Sam Snipe Prime. And I'm Zach Brown. We'll see you next time.
Hey, everybody. Thanks for taking the time to listen to the Chuckle Bros podcast. Be sure to drop us a like and comment on our Facebook page or subscribe and comment on the YouTube page. If you have any comments and suggestions, especially about Cody's awesome hair, feel free to drop us a DM. And of course, don't forget to check out CosmoVillies.com and use promo code Chocobros to get 10% off your next order.